uh, the time to turn on the recorder or you want this recording now? I'm just recording through Zoom. You don't need to record. Oh, just through Zoom. Yep. And I'm already okay. recording, so you're already fucking it up. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Well, if that being the case, I'm going to start recording now anyway for the just in case. So. Listeners beware. There's no turning back now. You've entered the Horror Apocalypse Podcast. Hey, everybody. Uh, today we are coming at you with an episode of Horror Apocalypse that was picked for us by one of our listeners who contributed to our GoFundMe account uh, to help us get new gear. And I think he he wanted to, to kind of make us pay for it, I guess. Uh, he, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Let me go ahead and introduce, we've got our, our regular co-host with us today. Uh-oh, retard alert! Hey, Chris, how you doing? <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> I got a new soundboard, so I'm going to get all kinds of great stuff. But anyway, that's Chris, and we have a special hey, guest with us today. Nobody. Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. It is Soju from Straight Chillin' Podcast. Go ahead and say hey, Soju. What up? It's your boy, Soju. Thanks for having me on, guys. I'm excited. Hey, thanks for agreeing to do such a low-budget podcast. <laughs> oh no, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, we can talk some Japanese horror today, huh? Yeah, if that's what you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was definitely Japanese something. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, let's. Uh, we we start our podcast pretty much the same way you guys used to. I guess you guys have changed it up on us a little bit here, but I know. I know we had to switch it up after all those one star. <laughs> reviews on iTunes. God damn. People really? You, whoa, 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 you get reviews on iTunes? Is that, uh, are you supposed <laughs> yeah, to be able to get reviews? Yeah. Do we get reviews yeah. on iTunes? We you do. think it's all glory at the top, but really it's just people <laughs> shitting on you. <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's go ahead and, and we'll go around the table kind of you, you're familiar with this. I'm sure you I've, I've got a report that you've listened to at least one episode of ours. So you're oh, yeah. familiar with it. <laughs> Chris, uh, what uh, let's get caught up. What have you been up to? Uh, what have I been up to? Um, well, we put up the stuff behind me. Uh, so I finally have a little uh, little area instead of just a pile of crap behind me. Now I actually have a pile of crap that are, that's on shelves. Um, and we laid down some carpet giggity um specifically uh at my girlfriend's house also giggity and then we watched uh we watched this today did uh my my girlfriend's actually in the room today again um so uh was there anything else we watched other than this that no no she's shaking her head no so this has uh been pretty much it mm. all right yourself well, what about you justin what have you been up to um, we just covered the orphanage yesterday on Straight Chillin' Podcast, and a couple weeks ago we covered Alien, and since then I've been on like kind of the Alien kick, so I went through Aliens and then Prometheus, um, and it's been a while since I'd seen Prometheus, so I kind of brought it back, and man, that movie is interesting, but also really convoluted, and so then I went down the rabbit hole of like YouTube's trying to explain to me like what everything was supposed to mean i was like damn this movie like <laughs> has some really cool elements to it but also it's way too damn complicated um did you see so i've been from huh? yeah <laughs> okay. so I, I haven't seen that in so long that i, I don't remember the majority of it yeah i hadn't really. either i and it was only because i watched alien that i just kind of like got on this roll of like oh, i kind of like want to revisit these films um and it had been a while since i watched it too and it was just as like confusing as the first time i'd watched it so time didn't help um <laughs> but i'm also going through the bioshock series um i oh, um serious. yeah i i played the first one uh, a couple months ago for our Twitch channel, but um, I have the whole collection and I've just kind of got sucked back into that. It's one of my favorite gaming series. That, that's um, easy especially. to get sucked back into. That, that yeah. Those games are really good. Yeah, they're so I'm like towards the end of two right now and I'm really excited because it's been a while since I've played three. I played one and two so much when they originally came out and I've played three like maybe twice, but it's been several years. So I'm excited to get back into that one soon but yeah that's about that's about all i've been doing lately 
Nice. Yeah. What have I been up to? Well, thanks for asking. How about, yeah, I was, I was about to say, I was you, about to, you, to Michael. You didn't, even, you didn't give the second. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to lately? Oh, my Lord. Um, let's see. I, I took your recommendation and I watched uh, Rampant. Okay. How did you enjoy that? I did. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Very good. Yeah. Um, very reminiscent of The Kingdom. Um, yeah. Not 100% sure which one came first, but ramp it did and i remember but only by like less than a year and i remember when kingdom was coming out i was really confused because i was like wait a second i just saw this in the movie theaters this is on net like the the (laughs) fact that it was a series i was very confused but i'm glad you enjoyed it i did i I checked that out um what else did i i recently uh, you know what i I think i made myself a list no i deleted it um (laughs) I watched a, a bunch, a bunch of movies. Oh, um, I've got five minute reviews coming up for um, uh, Z, which was uh, a new to new to Shutter. All all three of these were new to Shutter, but Z, Angst, and Tenebrae. Uh, I checked I'm those. I'm gonna out. guess that Z is uh, about zombies, right? No, nope, not oh, at all. Okay, well, I'm done. I'm shutting down. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking too when I first saw it, because this is like blood scratch Z on the, as the the logo, and it's about a family that is uh, haunted by their son's imaginary friend. Is uh, it an undead Zorro? No, but that also would okay. have been, um not as enjoyable. But <laughs> what else? Oh, and then we watched this this travesty uh, today. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, speaking of that, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all I've been up to. But speaking of, of travesty, let's go ahead and, I guess, jump into the discussion of, of this quote-unquote movie. Uh, Chris, you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. I will do that. I actually wrote down a bunch of stuff. So this way we uh, appear to be a little bit more professional, you know, because we have someone actually out here who, you know, does notes? these things much better than Real us. Real notes? You know. Oh, my God. Yeah, you guys yeah, really I did, are I did way more professional than me. <laughs> I, did the, I did the exact same thing. Actually, um, I, I pulled up a Wikipedia page just so I could kind of remember these people's <laughs> names. That's about as prepared as <laughs> I, I, I wrote down some of these names. And I, in the middle of it, I was like, I can't pronounce that. I, I, there's no way yeah. I can pronounce that. It ain't yeah. happening. This is usually any movie we review, I keep in a little journal here. And uh, uh-huh. you see all my, my notes for that. Um, okay. This one wow. even warrants a journal entry. This just gets a little. <laughs> <laughs> is that I a have, Dunder have, Mifflin? Does that say Dunder Mifflin on the top? Blizzard. Oh, okay. Blizzard. I don't know why. I don't know why I thought it said Dunder Mifflin. I actually have a page and like a quarter of, of stuff I grabbed from this, just because stuff that I, I thought I should be prepared for. I, um, took, I wrote down two and, and quotes. That's all I really did. That's all you got? Okay. Well, I mean, it's something. <laughs> Uh, so today we have Dead Sushi uh, 2012 with a uh, 5.7 on IMDb and 100, 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Whoa. Which, yeah. That, that, I know. It's like it's six uh, reviews or something. Yeah. Six reviews. <laughs> yeah. Percent, but that, that's the, yeah, no, no. Go, go to the yeah. real, real reviews. <laughs> the real reviews? Um, I didn't bother going past that. So I was like, okay, that's enough for me. So I just jotted it down. Did you find anything else? Yeah, it was 52%. Fifty-two percent on score, where? Right? On Rotten Tomatoes, it was a fifty-two percent audience score. Oh, audience score! Say, gotcha. Okay. Does it say how many people have reviewed that? It did, but I didn't pay attention. I think it's maybe five hundred. I looked it up too, but I can't remember. I'll try to pull it up again. Fangoria yeah. also gave it a review. They gave it a two point five out of five. Okay. Well, it's actually it's actually not too bad, really, when, yeah. you, when you think about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, the there's a lot of these names I'm really going to screw up. Um, so bear with me when, I, when I'm saying this. Uh, Your last name first. Der, <laughs> right, right. Der, der Ector. Der Ector. I think that was it. Was that it? Ah, yeah. Did I get that one right? Oh, that sounds, okay, cool. That sounds cool. a per- <laughs> uh, <laughs> Noboro Iguchi um, is the uh, director of this. He's also a uh, listed as a co-writer. Um, as well as Makiko Aguchi is also a co-writer. I'm assuming a wife or sister or lover of some kind is is my guess. I didn't really dig too deep into that. Uh, with a production of Ma- Mena Fuki, Mena Fukui, <laughs> made on. Uh, I just got a message from Matthew, by the way. It just beeped at me. I don't know if Michael, did you see that? No, or was it just to me. No. 
he uh, he said he's watching this right now and he's he's lovingly thinking of us. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Shout out. Um, we also have starring uh, Rina Takeda as Keiko, uh, Takashi Nishina as Mr. Hanamaki, uh, Kentaro Shimazu as Yamada. Toro Tiz- Mortal Kombat. I only got two. I only got two more because these are the only people I thought were actually important to the list. <laughs> uh, Toro Tezuka as President Komatsu and Gigi Boo as Keiko's father. That's the best I got out of it. it had one of those weird little things above the U. Oh my god! So, <laughs> but uh, we got a runtime of uh, I think it was 100 and, 131 minutes. Ninety one minutes. Ninety. Yeah, roughly. So that was uh, that was it. So that's all I got. That's it. I didn't write down anything else, and I'm done. That's it. Oh Jesus. Okay. Two hundred thirty-four uh, on the audience score. Um, Two hundred thirty-four people rated it on Rotten Tomatoes for the fifty-two percent, and only about one hundred and twenty of them actually liked it. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um. All right. So this this is a basic. Uh, basically, it's a movie about a girl who's growing up. Uh, she her father is a a. Uh, gourmet sushi uh, chef prep, preparer um, and he's training her to to I guess uh, take over for him take over the, the business and uh, she's learning all the techniques of how to prepare sushi correctly and I, I gotta tell you that the opening intro song really hooked me it kind of no. reminded me of baby metal for a second yeah and uh, then the the opening montage of her training, I loved it. I thought that was hilarious. The um, I actually put notes on that one. Um, the uh, crap, crap, crap <laughs> when he's bashing the sushi on the counter, or when she's training by by pressing the the sushi into her hand with the weighted ball on her hand. It was hilarious. I, I loved that whole thing. Um, How did you guys watch this? I was curious. Like, did you watch it in Japanese with English subtitles, or okay. did you watch the English over yeah. to? Yeah, I, I, uh, I got the subtitles. I'm not a okay. fan. Of that. Yeah, so I didn't, I, I didn't know there was an option. I found it the way I watched it was really curious, and it's going to kind of tie into maybe how I talk about this film. Mine was actually English dubbed, but I continued to watch it with the English subtitles that were designated for the original Japanese. Okay. so the which was off so obviously like for the, the the dubbing dialogue was off but the so the um subtitles were supposed to be for the original japanese talking so it was interesting to see the difference there in in like implication and and what they were supposed to say or like i don't know how it was directly translated so yeah it was weird that's uh that that's interesting. That must have been a real mind mind fuck. <laughs> Try, yeah. trying to watch and read and go. Is that the same? What they just say? They really say that? Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, that's part of why I prefer the the subtitled over the the dubbed. Is I don't know what it is. The way the actors uh, deliver their lines has a lot more emotion than somebody who's now trying to reiterate it in a different language. Yeah. So the way the the lines are written, the way the the lines are conveyed. Uh, brings a, a different type of emotion and of course it makes you feel differently about them yeah so i'm not a huge fan of, of dubbed where'd you where did you find it dubbed at uh oof, i can't remember <laughs> i mean i could probably send you a link later um if i look at my history but it was a stream and it just happened to be english dub but had the the subtitles still attached to it okay yeah we the only way i could find it was um through uh youtube Okay. That's See, I couldn't it. even find it on YouTube. Uh, I know you had mentioned that, but I couldn't find it there. Um, I could probably tell you in just a second. But um, yeah, and it, you're right, though. And that's one of the weird things I kind of want to touch on with this film, because I, um, I've i been getting into a lot more Korean horror since I've lived over here, but not a lot of comedy. And it's weird when you're talking about foreign comedies, because so much of what makes comedy special to us are even I was thinking about like puns or it has a lot to do with language and it has a lot to do with um, references and things like that. So even when you're getting things like subtitles, um, so like in the realm of comedy, it's it's still so, I feel like so much is still lost. Mm-hmm. Um just because um, if you try, and I don't even know how like Japanese comedy compares to English comedy or any foreign comedy 
because uh, the only thing I can do is pull references. For some reason, I kept thinking of like Austin Powers um, during this movie. Um, as far as the realm of comedy, I was just thinking about like so many references to like things like stereotypes of how we view British people or like um, references to old spy movies or like play on words like a lot of vagina. Like so much of it is based in things that like even when you, like if you're talking about a foreign comedy it's so hard to pull those things out so um a lot of the comedy for me was just like the physical comedy and the ridiculousness of a lot of things and i'm just curious at like how much is lost in translation well this this movie lost me in a lot of places <laughs> <laughs> it didn't uh, it didn't it didn't make you feel like you were watching an anime because from, oh, yeah. from the beginning, I was like, this is just like a, a live action anime. It's exactly how it felt, especially half the shit that happens in this is stuff that you can close your eyes and go, okay, yeah, I can see Goku doing that, you know, uh, just to pull a rep, just to pull an anime character. I don't, I don't care, but um, that's exactly how it felt during the majority of this for me anyway. Like, like when the bum pulled his, his human head off and was like, surprise, yes. motherfucker. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I laughed out loud when he turned into a fish. That show was pretty funny. <laughs> Not just a fish. He was really specifically a tuna. It was very specific yeah. to say tuna. It's like, yeah. you get, that's not a bass. It's a tuna. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You're going to get a lot of these little sound bumps. I'm, I, I'm freaking loving it. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No. It, so we're, we're kind of led to believe in the very beginning that um, when he's doing the, the father's doing the knife training on Keiko and he nicks her hand, the blood drips on the sushi. And we're at, at first I was like, well, why did her blood infect the sushi? And this is what's, what's going to happen. How did, yeah. what had happened there? And then we find out later that no, that, that has absolutely nothing to do with. Yeah. I was confused by that. It really, that really just set off the credits, the opening credits, but yeah, I yeah. was confused by that as well. <laughs> did, I, and I may have looked away at, at this part uh, right afterwards, but did, did her father eat that piece of sushi? I saw him eating a piece of sushi like right afterwards, but I think I blinked uh, and I was like, did he just maybe. eat that? I, don't, I, I just that remember down. it kicked off that moment, kicked off like the opening credits, I think. Cause okay. then there was like a bit of blood splatter, like in the font and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't remember uh, him eating that piece in particular. Okay. Um, but at, at that point she, uh, she kind of freaks out and then I blinked for a minute. And the next thing I know she's, she's run away and she's working at this. She gets a job at this inn that's in financial troubles and you know, they're, they're struggling and their, their head sushi chef um, is now the gardener and somebody else that doesn't actually respect sushi is now the new sushi guy. And um, uh, the, Oh, I, like I mentioned, I, I wrote down two lines in particular that I felt really, summed up this movie and the the first scene was actually one of them just before Keiko runs away uh her father says and I quote you it smell is. like a woman which only adds to the fish smell I worked on the same thing <laughs> yeah that I think that would cause me to run away too uh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah this movie is problematic in a lot of way and it's hard to like I said you don't know like who it's made for or like if it's trying to be a parody of something but then I also looked up the director who apparently directs a lot of splatter films and porn as well so then I was like well okay I don't want to like let this film off the hook too much then because <laughs> this dude seems generally kind of skeevy <laughs> just just from his just from a few articles i picked up yeah, it, it was definitely out there uh but but that being said what what did i just watch recently that i i thought was somebody recommended it and it was just way the fuck out there um erotica well yeah erotica <laughs> yeah, recommended erotica for us thanks bob uh, oh, um <laughs> Bob has now like seen that movie way too many times. <laughs> well, I, I I told Chris I, I plan on buying it as well uh, because there's a version that comes out with the soundtrack, and I have to have the soundtrack. Uh, okay. So as you see, yeah, I have to though. I, I fully defended Bob during your whole <laughs> <laughs> the tirade, right? <laughs> Now, so uh, she's working at this hotel. There, there's all kinds of problems at this this inn that she's working at. Um, 
the the sushi chef is making out with the hostess who i guess is married to the owner um and and it, justin and soju this is where we're going to need your information i know it's not you're not in japan you're in korea mm-hmm. but is there an asian thing <laughs> with, uh kissing and, ex- and basically <laughs> balling a yoke from each other's that mouth. shit was wild i thought i thought it was hilarious too how they just like kept gagging and then at the end he's finally <laughs> like this is disgusting i was like what the fuck is going that's definitely a japanese thing i don't know what's going on there <laughs> well I, I i did look at my wife and i i said you know well special japanese kissing we'll have to <laughs> Uh, an egg yolk between us and no she didn't seem to go for that idea <laughs> yeah. but so she left you is what you're saying after that <laughs> yes, yes uh, she is packing at the moment um <laughs> <laughs> no so, uh I, what i on top of all the other issues wrong with this movie that what really got me though and it got me early and i noticed it through the entire movie it's uh the sound design it was horrible horrible mm-hmm. When uh, the first two people are coming up the the um, the driveway, and he's like, "You didn't tell me we had to walk twenty minutes from the station to to get here. You owe me a kiss." And he kind of grabs her and forces himself on her to to give her a kiss. It sounded like he was doing everything he could to try and ingest her face. The the <laughs> lip smacking and and sucking was ugh. and it carried over many times in this movie. Guys- yeah, and that's well, and that's why I wanted to even like with the kiss thing and like sound design like that, where it's just like it's kind of disturbing. Being as a guy who like directed porn, um, yeah, <laughs> and and like specifically not just like generic porn. It seems like he's directed a lot of like weird, like kind of specifically fetish porn. So it seems like he's just got those. It's probably almost like a soundboard, like you've got. Like, okay, where's the weird Japanese kiss? Let's go ahead and press the button. You know, like I don't know. It just seems like this guy's kind of forte. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> yeah. Now, with you, with that being said, I, I do have a thing for Asian porn, so I am probably going to have to look this guy up and see what. All right, there you, yeah, see what you, you know for research purposes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're going to cover more of his work at some point. We we should. A lot of it involves uh, egg yolks, just so you know. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Fantastic. <laughs> By the way, thank you so much, Kane, for donating on our GoFundMe. And um, as Justin so eloquently pointed out uh, before, what we do to folks who donate to us either on Patreon or... Damn. damn. <laughs> we throw them under the bus. So uh, big fuck you, Kane, for picking this movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, has, has any of you seen the movie Attack of the Killer Donuts? No. Not. No? No. If you've seen this movie, you've seen Attack of the Killer Donuts. Uh, (laughs) It's exactly the same animation style. Uh, So so we have flying donuts is what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, the scene later on, once the sushi is kind of taken over the the inn, attacking everybody, and they get locked in that that room, and the sushi's kind of flying all around them and attacking, and uh, the pretty boy businessman, I forget his name, uh, Nako... Uh, hang on hang on yeah. i may have wrote it down i didn't write it down okay right. yeah, what are the characters you nasaka i think maybe yeah, i think that's it nasaka yeah, that's uh that sounds about right i knew it started with land he uh when he's shooting at the the uh the sushi that's flying around that exact same scene is an attack of the killer donuts they're locked <laughs> in a donut um uh, store restaurant whatever and the donuts they're are free. flying around and they're they're one guy's shooting at him wildly. Another one's smacking him with a, a tennis racket. So a lot of similarities between these two. Even the teeth, for example, the, the little pointy teeth yeah. that are in the sushi are, are the exact same type of teeth that the killer donuts have. It's so yeah. a lot of similarities there. But that led to the next, um, the next line from, from this movie that I had to write down. Um, and it was uh, the quote of things have reached a point that they no longer make sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, that was I, way <laughs> later in the movie though. And, I, and I'm, when I, when I heard him say that, I was like, wow, now they're not making sense. Like it didn't yeah. start making it. That didn't happen. Like, I don't know, 45 minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, I like at first they're like kind of surprised. She's like, I saw some flying sushi. And he's like, have you gone insane? I was like, well, at least there's like some form of 
like a groundedness here. At least he seems surprised that there's flying sushi. Well, I think we all. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I don't think I, I know anybody. Um, Chris, if you came running into the room and went, oh my God, this <laughs> a piece of sushi just flew by the window. I'd be like, who's flinging sushi out there? You know, <laughs> there's a little bit of absurdity in it. And I, yeah. I, you know what? I, okay. I Attack of the Killer Donuts came out 2016. So it's, um, and it looks like it was directed by an American. So that could have been heavily in reference to this film, which came out in 2012. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Now, when I watch a movie, I try to find what the message is, what the, the subplot is, and, and what the producer and director are trying to convey. What, what are they saying to us? Did anybody find a message in this movie? Yeah, don't eat sushi. Yeah, what was that? That's pretty much it. I will tell you, though, this movie made me want to eat some damn sushi. Yeah. I was watching this, and I was like, I need to get some sushi this week. Because, I, w- I mean, it was, like, late at night, too. Like, it wasn't, like, dinner time or anything. And I was like, damn, I need to get some sushi this week. Um, so that's – maybe it's just a big commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I guess the main bad guy, guess, was, like, uh, what, uh, outed by a pharmaceutical company. So, like, fuck big business <laughs> was, like, the best. What was he- for they i don't they turn on him something yeah. he he worked in the lab or something yeah. and he made something that they requested that he make but when it all went to shit they threw him under the bus was yeah. what i got from it um so the execs essentially like ordered him to make something he made it but it even though he warned them against it and um and then they threw him under the bus and he ended up being homeless that was the serum that he injected into the squid i'm assuming was what he created right yeah yeah yeah. so like corporate greed (laughs) and then and then the ever popular we got to cover our tracks so no one else can know what we did so that uh new nasaka guy or no no raka guy whichever pretty boy guy was he's the one who designed the thing that got him sent to jail Mm. now i've got a little bit of a stretch for you guys um I, I keep your pants on. Yeah, I love. Um, I am hung like a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I love zombie movies. Zombie movies are my <sighs> my number one. It's my forte. Um, so one of my favorite zombie movies, Train to Busan, one of the first um, animated living dead things you see is a deer. You see a deer in this one that they were experimenting on. Had the white eyes, everything like that. You think it's a link? To Train to Busan? Yeah. When, when was it, Train to Busan? Mm, Train to Busan really was released. Somewhere between 16 and 18. Yeah, I think okay. 15, yeah. So uh, probably not. <laughs> Especially being that one is like a Japanese splatter film and uh, one is Korean and is like kind of like serious. Uh, Korea and like Japan don't have the best relationship. So I'd like a respected director from Korea. I don't think would maybe be referencing a Japanese splatter. <laughs> but may I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just Cause even, even in uh, train to Busan and soul station, we don't know what caused the, the outbreak that I can, think of so i was i'm trying to find uh they explained it in train to busan it, it was a very similar kind of explanation because it had to do with the company that the main guy worked for um because he gets a call on the phone at one point and he's like oh my god we caused this it's another like kind of corporate greed exp- like skirting regulation slash like we yeah. fucked it all up yeah type of thing. well i remember his assistant saying you know are, are we responsible am i to blame you know that's yeah sort of- but they never really said what they did. Last I, I knew, wasn't he a financial trader or something like that? I can't remember. Maybe you might be right. So, so I don't, maybe, maybe it was just a, a old homeless Japanese man running around ejecting sushi. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really uh, familiar. Speaking of, of ejecting sushi, um, when we get to um, the scene with the sushi humping on the tree stump, Oh my oh, god! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> that was hot. 
I'm not gonna lie. That was really hot. I was no, that was no, that was horrible. <laughs> and then all the little horrible. sushi start come yeah. pouring out. Yeah, I was expecting fish eggs. To be perfectly honest. Yeah, actually, that would have been. Yeah, probably been. That that was fun. actually a great choice of words. Come pouring out. That was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, I guess that was the kind of thing I was trying to take this movie and be like, okay, like what's the, what's kind of like the comedy around and stuff like that. And that was one of those moments where I was like, well, I guess that's a universal kind of like low hanging fruit, you know, like (laughs) things banging it out or whatever. But one thing I will say that was, I thought was hilarious and clever, um, I guess for a movie that felt really dumb and immature, um just i appreciated this from a actual filmmaking aspect and like hey he thought of that and it's pretty funny was the was the the rice that ultimately like fills their mouth and at some point it's just sticky rice just like stuck around their mouth and face and i was like that's like really funny in a really easy yet kind of clever way. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, it was effective yeah. when it was like pouring out of their mouth to the point to where he even was aware of it because when the hostess has been like infected and she's turning into a zombie, the the, the husband is literally wiping the rice out of her mouth and then just more comes pouring out until <laughs> like her mouth is empty of the rice that she had to hold in her mouth. <laughs> and, and, and the fact he even actually says, it just keeps coming out as he's, as he's doing it. He's like, it just keeps coming. It just keeps yeah. coming. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually thought that was really funny and effective in a way. Instead of foam, it was rice, but it was so easy like to create that effect. Um, I, I appreciated that. Yeah, I did too. And and rice is such an easy a easy thing to use rather than trying to do some sort of prosthetic. So yeah, I yeah. Feel- and even even like switching out for like the foam that you would get maybe on some zombies. It just actually like the the imagery of it was like effective, but clever and stupid at the same time. But it worked. Yeah, and and the fact of how she got uh, how she personally got infected was freaking yeah. hysterical. <laughs> that I, I absolutely love that. I, I looked down for a second, looked back up and went, oh, that thing just went right up, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, the old suit, sushi up the cooch, damn. <laughs> Sus cooch. Yeah, right up in there. Yeah, this movie is definitely problematic in a lot of ways regarding s- sexuality and women. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> well, we, we get that a lot in... Um, I'm going to make an assumption here, but we get that a lot in Japanese culture, don't we? That uh, women are more subservient um, to them. Well, see, and that's what I was like when, especially I was trying to kind of pay attention to that in the same way I was talking about the references, um, because that ultimately is like the stereotype or that is the reference. Like, oh, Japanese, like they have weird sexual fetishes and like things like that. And so that's why I kind of mentioned the idea of comedy, because you never know. I don't know what's being referenced and what's being uh, or like what's obviously being referenced from a Japanese audience. So like if if somebody from Korea had never seen Scream and they watched Scary Movie first, <laughs> you know, like they'd be like, well, you know, what the fuck is some of this? And you don't know what's directly a reference or parroting something else. And so that's why I was saying like it's hard with comedy from a different culture and a, diff- a different language. So much is going to be lost. So I don't know if this dude is just – a really creepy skeeve or if he's like trying to poke fun at the industry that he's kind of like made a living off of i don't know yeah or he could absolutely have just said this is the best script i've ever written in my entire life this is complete <laughs> serious this is gone with the wind material and yeah. then he made this <laughs> uh no no <laughs> no no you don't you don't think so we're reaching <clears throat> we're reaching but um do you have anything else in particular either one of you would want to make mention of on this movie? Any comments, likes, dislikes? Eggy. 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 Oh, yeah. The, the egg, the referent, the whole – they had this whole subplot with, like, breaking down sushi. I guess that also was its thing. They, they actually hired. spent a lot of time explaining sushi and – proper etiquette and the reference to the egg sushi and how you shouldn't disrespect it and it became a character so i mean there's like a whole like deal going on into the sushi world here now 
I, I looked it up as much as I possibly could, and I found no answer. When she's smacking Eggy and go, and Eggy's going, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> The closest I could find, because I looked up what does poon mean in Japanese, and the closest thing I could find was it's a reference to pawn, uh, a chess piece. And that still does not make any damn sense to me. Hmm. So any idea? Well, was the, wasn't the subtitle like Al or something like that? Wasn't the subtitle what? I think Like think Al so. or something like that? Like some, some kind of pain sub, uh, subtitle? Like Ow, Ouch or something like that? I, I could have sworn I that's what so. I said. I think so. My subtitle said poon, P-O-O-N. Oh, did really? really? Mine, yeah. mine did not say that. Uh, I th- I right. think mine said some kind of like, yeah, ouch or something. Oh, okay. Well, that would make more sense then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see that smacking it and it saying ouch. Um, and then at the end when it smooches her and uh, goes after the battleship, that was that was actually really cute and touching. I thought that was... I completely cool. forgot that that egg turned into a battleship. Or no, was it the egg? Something turned no, into the egg a was, flying. Egg was, egg was fighting the battleship. Uh, but, yeah, uh, that's right. With acid, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the giant, the giant tuna uh, gave gave spawn to uh, a enormous battleship sushi boat. <laughs> yeah, that was. There's some wild, even like <laughs> referencing this as a zombie movie is feels strange because I guess there's a very brief moment of like a zombie. Um, infection but mostly it's like flying sushi and then a man who turns into tuna and then some zombie people who are infected by sushi and then a flying boat i i think you you just hit the nail on the head with with all of that there were two guys (laughs) possibly three stoned out of their mind and they wrote down a couple things flying sushi (laughs) giant battleship boat made out of sushi that cam- comes out of a tuna's face, giant tuna. How do we make this work? We'll figure <laughs> it out. That's exactly how that happened, I think. No. Yeah. <laughs> no? I'm pretty sure. I have a feeling that happened. There is definitely a feeling yeah. of this, too, like not being familiar with Japanese, but the tuna guy like felt like a Power Ranger character, you know? Yes. The, yes, you know, just you. that kind of look <laughs> and you. everything like that. I was like, okay, I mean, some of this is somewhat familiar. At some um, point in time, like Zed's staff was going to come hit it and it was going to grow big at some point yeah. in time. It probably <laughs> happened after the fact. Yeah, I some of the visual effects were um cool and i liked that you could see how they were done like the one guy had the squid sushi speared through his cheek and ended up stretching his face the one girl gets eaten by sushi and then it's like kind of coming out of her and you can literally see it looks like they made it out of like deli meat but it's kind of fun (laughs) i liked how kind of cheap and schlocky that looked and then also at one point oh the ramen coming out of the guy's face where he gets like a hole punctured and it swells up and then the ramen is like coming at that pretty boy or whatever um those were like interesting visual effects on because the the CGI looked terrible, like the flying sushi, and that, that looked really bad. But I liked that they threw some of that in there. Um, it looked interesting, at least. Yeah, I, I, I spent most of the movie with a, uh, what the fuck, look on my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I actually did say that to my wife at one point, too. I said, when did this turn into a Power Rangers episode? Uh, so, yeah, definitely, I got that same feel. Um, and then the, with the, the thing... You pointed out with the ramen coming out of his cheek. I, I thought Dr. Pimple Popper. So there was, a, there was a lot that made me keep watching going, oh, what else is this? What else are reminding me of here? So uh, I can't think of anything else to, to really say about this movie, though. <laughs> I, I think if, if we try too hard, we're just we're trying too hard. So yeah, there, there were a couple things I, I jotted down that uh, I'll throw out there right now. Uh, sushi girls mm-hmm. the uh suddenly oh no no we want you to dance for us wait wait what <laughs> we want to eat sushi off your body that came out of nowhere that was complete left field even though i was thinking about it in the back of my head um did you not hear uh, where the director's uh expertise lies <laughs> yeah i know i know that was that that came way after believe me um so we got the sushi girls uh we had uh random nudity by the way who was that woman was she just a person staying at the inn that we did not see until all of a sudden she's deciding that she wants to take a take a bath? 
I did yeah. not care. And then bathed in blood. I did forget <laughs> about like this, but how that scene ended where she's like bathing in blood. That was and and saying I feel yummy, by the way, yeah. which immediately skeeved me out. <laughs> immediately. Yeah. I very... can't be the only one that was, you know, turned on by that scene, right? Only only when the blood uh, hit though, right? <laughs> the whole thing. It's just special. Uh, was it the guy in the background? Is that is that what was helping it out? The fact he was watching? Yeah. Is that I put myself in his position up until yeah. one part, but yeah. <laughs> yeah so sneaky. <laughs> but that, what's yeah. funny is, is when that scene happened, when she comes walking into uh the pool room and starts getting ready. The whole time I'm sitting there going, how can you think you're alone? He's right there floating on top of clear water. Clear water. <laughs> it's not even very deep water. It's like, it looks like it's like maybe like half deep. <laughs> and then when, when she disrobed and got in the shower, I went, all right, well, I know exactly where we're starting with uh, Soju's rating. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's already, that, already on the positive side. That, gotta get the that half star funny, for the Yabos. That. Man's got a code. <laughs> See, everybody, that's where we get it from. We stole it from <laughs> Justin. Yeah, man's got a code. <laughs> it's a good code. It is yeah. a good code. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I guess let's uh, – let's, what do you want to do first, the rating or the double feature? I, I think we rate the fuck out of this. All right. Well, how about it? Oh, you want me to go first? I Actually, you know what? Uh, <laughs> Guess go first. I'm gonna Guess, sit back yeah. and let you guys figure it all out. We going out of we going out of five. Yeah, yeah, we do have a five. five. All right, I just want to make sure it's properly weighted. <laughs> <laughs> some some do out of four, so I always gotta remind myself. Like, okay, um, out of five, dead sushi from 2012. Um, it's already getting the half star for the Yabos because, of course, a man's got a code. Um, but there were, it was very problematic. This is not a quality film by any means. It's not even a good film. It's sometimes an entertaining film. Um, I still feel like, uh, a lot is lost, um, on me. And also too, in the realm of, I, I recognize that this is at the same time, a popular subgenre of film in, um, you know, in in Japan, in the same way that we have like exploitation films and, and things like that, I I recognize that they have this schlocky type of subgenre for horror. So it's just not something I'm familiar with. So I don't know what the mass appeal to that is, or if it's it's a good film in that subgenre. But um, as somebody who's completely ignorant watching, um, it was problematic in the way that it treats women, obviously, and and it's just general lack of, like, the CGI looks bad. Like you are saying, the sound design is pretty bad. Um, it, the script makes no sense. Nobody's really trying to act. Um, but at the same time, there were some cool aspects. I did like some of the visual effects that they used. Um, and even, like, for the absurdity of it, there were a couple times where I just – like just laughed out loud like i thought that show was funny when that dude turned into a tuna so you know props for him for that um but do, do not confuse my score for thinking this is a good film by any means but i'll give it um with the half star for the yabos i'll go to 1.5 okay yeah right. visual visual effects um and making me laugh a couple times <laughs> and half star for the yabos yeah 1.5 okay actually uh, uh a tad lower than than what i got um i also found a lot of the same problems that has been mentioned already um i did laugh out of absolute ridiculousness throughout a good chunk of this movie and a lot of it was what the fuck did i just see like yeah. but it was imaginative i can't deny that that somebody thought of this and they did put it together. They managed to, to scrape this together and put it out there. And not only that, they did give us nudity, which, as we all know, automatically gets the half star. And and I was happy about that. Um, so for me, actually, that bumped, bumped it up to a three, to be totally honest, because I wow. actually sat through this and went, I enjoyed it. It was crap. It was absolute crap, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> would I watch it ride, again? Huh? It was That's a fun ride. Out. I mean, it, yeah. Would I watch it again? Probably not. You know, uh, but 
Would I recommend someone, to, if they want to watch something really stupid, to kill 90 minutes? Sure, knock yourself out. You know, so that's, uh, that's what I got from it. <laughs> no. All right, no. Michael. <laughs> Michael is not. <laughs> He's not pleased. Three is way too high. <laughs> way too that high. It's quite generous, but, yeah. you know. I, I thought it was their... too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I went into this not expecting much because, you know, Kane picked it, and we know Kane's choice of <laughs> movies. Uh, we know Kane, so I, I kind of, you know, expected something uh, similar. Um, I did not expect this bad of a movie, though. Um, the the sound design really took me out of it right from the beginning. So I did not have uh, anything good to say. When, when I started with the, the sound, the opening theme song, the opening um, mo- montage, that was like, yes. Then the, the uh, folks walking up the driveway, they start slurping each other. No, now we're back at his. <laughs> um, the uh, squid wiggling out of his, his chest kind of made me go, what, what's happening here? What's going on? And then when it shot and, and attacked, I was, no, nah, this, this is not good. I can't do this anymore. Um, the beheading of, of the, the girl and the blood spurt. I was like, okay, so this is going to be one of those Japanese uh, splatter fests. And I, I love those. I mean, I, I have movies over here like Big Tits Zombie, which is, I mean, it's a, it's a sexploitation splatter film about zombies in, in, oh my God, it's fantastic. So I went in, yay, this is going to maybe be reminiscent of that. No, no, it let me down numerous, numerous times. Um, but it, it did give me a few chuckles did give me a few laughs um mostly what the fuck was that type laugh and um the half star from the uh the yabos uh brings me to a two whoa you guys are quite generous with their scores (laughs) (laughs) no that's yeah i'm actually a little surprised i even had a 1.5 but yeah it wasn't like it wasn't the worst thing i've seen that's for damn sure no, no, no. I, the, the fight choreography was pretty good in some areas. Some of the, yeah. the yeah. like the sushi based in the Chaku, um, the, yeah. the woman that plays Keiko, uh, she did another movie that I was a really big fan of Karate Girl. I thought was, was really fun to watch. Um, so I kind of, I was a little bit generous for her as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, all in all, I was, I was really disappointed in this one and really disappointed in Kane as well. So, <laughs> I'm sure he feels ashamed. <laughs> but now, probably not. It's on to our our ever popular segment. Double double feature double feature feature feature. Justin, this is a segment we uh, brought in recently where we take a movie and we figure what would be a great double feature for this movie. We're going to make it a, a double feature weekend. So no uh, we'll go around and we'll start with Chris so you can get an idea kind of what we we look for. Um, Chris, if you're going to uh, give this a double feature, what's your pick? What's my pick? I actually sat here trying to think of uh, what I could actually pair this up with. And I, <laughs> the only thing that popped in my head was Japanese anime. That was the only thing that popped in my head. I couldn't think of anything else. Um, Urusuga Doji? I, what? Overfiend? What? Never mind. Go ahead. I, I got the second one. I didn't get the first one. Um, I actually couldn't think of anything else aside from one word that popped in and I still don't agree with it, but it popped in my head. Akira. <laughs> I don't know why it popped in my head. It has nothing to do with this at all, at all. Zero, but it popped in my head. So I guess Akira. Uh, yeah, I know it has nothing to do with it at all. Don't, don't question it. Just, just go. With nah. it. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm ashamed. Believe me, I'm ashamed of that one myself because nothing else popped in my head. Um, probably because of all the the way it made me feel like watching anime. Mm-hmm. It's probably exactly what it what it was. So, okay. All right. But typically, just so you know, this is supposed to be something that they kind of collate together, <laughs> and that that didn't happen at all. So I have no idea why the hell that popped in my head. So whoever's next, go ahead. I guess uh, <laughs> you want to give it a shot, so you. Uh, sure. Um, when you had told me what movie we were going to be watching, the first thing that popped in my head, and now I will say, to be fair, I actually haven't seen this film, and but it's something I went ahead and like referenced to you, and it's because you had mentioned this movie. 
But last year there was a Korean zombie comedy that came out. It looks really goofy. Um, and so that's what made me think of it. It was called The Odd Family Zombie on Sale. Um, so it just came out last year. And just from have se- like seeing the trailer, um, it looked like it might be in a similar kind of realm, just like a horror comedy from, you know, like a, a Asian country. So I don't know. Um, it, that might be good. It's got some good reviews. Um, so you might be into that. And the only other thing, like I said, this isn't really my – these types of, like, movies um, – I like I haven't seen a lot of them so the only other thing that popped in my head was like hey if you just watch this movie and now you want to watch a really good Japanese comedy about zombies then just watch one cut of the dead <laughs> so um that I mean th- those were my my only two um not having a lot of experience <laughs> with this Japanese subgenre I, I remember you t- uh, tell me about um the odd family and I went looking for it I can't find that yeah i can't find it yeah legally i'm sure i can find it (laughs) yeah that's the key (laughs) but um i I do plan on giving that a shot as soon as i can find it uh for me uh, i actually wrote down three movies because i i assumed you guys would take at least one of them um but i i went with uh the three that i picked um one of them is actually really really pretty common and I'm, i'm surprised nobody went with uh shaolin soccer it's that over the top martial arts. Um, there's a little bit of a cooking theme where the the main character in Shaolin Soccer falls in love with the the woman who makes the buns, um, and, and it's a lot of fun with that. But more keeping in with the theme of this one, I picked either um, God of Cookery or Kung Fu Chef. Either one of those two. All three movies. No, excuse me. Two movies I have never heard of in my entire life, but all three I've never seen. Okay, you should check out Shaolin Soccer. It's actually really good. Oh, that that one I that, that like sparked a memory of it, but I've never seen it. It's fun. Lots of great CGI, wire foo, uh, fun story. Um, definitely, definitely one I would recommend for a lighthearted view. And it looks like we got a comment on Facebook. Uh, my wife says she would pair it with the stuff. Stuff. The stuff. I've never seen that one. <gasps> the stuff. Really. 1980s movie where they find this bubbling white goo coming out of the ground and then they package it and sell it like ice cream and it ends <laughs> people from the inside. Huh? No, no, but you know what? I'm going to jot it down because now I kind of want to see this. Yeah, I'm like pulling it up now. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. I definitely, uh, I have the arrow release, which you guys probably won't know, but Bob would. So, <laughs> you know what? I'm sold. And the reason is, is the rotten tomato score is the, uh, straight chilling special 69. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, all right, so I guess that that pretty much sums everything up. Uh, Justin, you want to tell people where they can find you? Yeah, um, if you want to hear some other horror perspectives, I am one of the hosts on the Straight Chilling Podcast. Uh, we talk about horror movies, horror video games. Um, you can check us out wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel that has like uh, I do video game re- horror video game reviews on there and that's at youtube.com forward slash straight chilling podcast um i also i live in seoul south korea and um i love taking pictures out here so if you're interested in any uh korean travel pictures i also do a travel page on instagram it's justin abroad i do tour videos too on youtube that's youtube.com forward slash justin abroad travel videos and that's just tours around seoul uh, mostly I went to Busan last week, so I'm working on a video this week for that. Did, so if you're interested in, huh, I actually took a plane. It was cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> it was cheaper. Round trip was cheaper than taking a, and faster. So, uh, yeah, if, um, any of that sounds interesting to you, hit me up and check me out. I'll tell you, I did check out his, uh, his videos on YouTube and, um, back when the, the outbreak was first coming out and you did a video on what it's like being over there during the outbreak. Yeah. Uh, that was really informative. Um, I enjoyed it. And that's what really got me to subscribe to that channel as well. So, Oh, cool. Thanks. Yeah. That, cause it hit us like a month before you guys. And so everybody, I remember everybody was asking me at the time. So it was weird to experience it like a month later where it like hit the States. I was like, Oh shit, just yeah. went through this. <laughs> 
and you guys seem pretty studious about it. I mean, you, you had everything locked down. You had people checking uh, temperatures as you're going into buildings, things like that. We're just now getting to the point where people are checking temperatures before. Yeah. Such, so. Yeah. And that's still going on. The movie theaters are open here, but, um, but I went and saw 1917 in the movie theaters here. And they're still like, as you go in individually check in and making sure you wash your hands and everybody's got a mask on and everything you get. And when you book your seats, you got to like, they have it spread out. So yeah, it's, yeah, they've got it pretty well maintained here, but yeah, it's, it took a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Nobody here wants to do that work. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um. All right. So guys, that's, I guess that does it for us. Uh, am I forgetting anything, Chris? Um, yeah. One, one kind of important thing. What's that? Uh-oh. GoFundMe. The GoFundMe? Yeah, well, and by, the time, by the time this, this one airs, um, I mean, I'll tell it for the people watching, but yeah. it probably will be done by then. Um, we are begging you to pay for our new equipment. <laughs> Um, uh, some of the stuff we have is, is kind of old. I'm looking to upgrade so we can bring you some better content. Uh, I'm looking to get a DSLR camera so we can bring you some quality YouTube videos. Um, uh, for some reason, I think you people want to see my ugly mug uh, on a weekly basis. So we're going to do it. Uh, so far, we've had quite a, bit, quite a bit of contribution. And I do thank everybody for everything that you've chipped in. You're, you're at least paying for that camera right now. Uh, we're going to get a new board so we can get some better sound quality. I got this. Uh, I already bought this uh, soundboard myself. Um, I have a green screen coming so we can do some custom backgrounds. Uh, what else did I just order? Oh, the uh, Razer Ripsaw. I just uh, bought one of those so I can run that camera to my computer when I get it. Um, there was something else I swear I just bought. I, I swear to God, I spent more money than I should have in the past uh, month to upgrade some of this stuff for everybody. But uh, thank you guys. If you check it out, go to GoFundMe.com, uh, search Horror Apocalypse Podcast, and you'll find it right there. Or just, you know, I think I'm posting on, on our page at least twice a day. You know, at least, yeah. So get on over there. One dollar. 50 cents anything you can do helps us and we greatly appreciate it if you do donate 20 dollars or more you do get to pick a movie for us to review we do have a bonus going on right now first person to donate a 75 uh donation gets a hellraiser themed pack comes with a few hellraiser movies on blu-ray hellraiser t-shirts a uh pint-sized mini of hell priest and a bunch of other extra stuff um mm -hmm. We're also doing three more packs if you donate $50 or more of a minimum of three movies per pack, uh, plus some extra stuff. And I know Chris uh, has some garbage he'll probably throw into one of the boxes for you too. So yeah, Absolutely. I'm cleaning out my drawers, so uh, you'll, you'll get some stuff. But uh, guys, uh, thank you so much for everything. Justin, thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, guys. Anytime. And uh, with that, Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks, don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Nope. Fuck this shit, I'm out. All right then. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'ma get the fuck up out of here. Fuck this shit, I'm out.